what's up guys Dave for one two and two and it's discussion day <laughs> ah i haven't done one of these in a little while because the time constraints however i'm trying a different uh a different schedule for the week and i think it'll actually uh, i think it'll actually pan out ryan's gonna help me he's actually editing this video right now say hi ryan i can't wait to see what he did to this kind of help take the load off i'll still edit and do all the big main videos he's gonna do these little ones for me because why the hell not? Thanks, buddy. And today we're talking about that structure deck contest they did over on the OCG that everyone was voting on to see which of the chosen archetypes would actually get a structure deck. Spoiler alert, uh, Shadal's won. However, Sacred Beasts came in a very, very close second. And today's hypothesis for the discussion video is, it's a damn good thing Shadal's won because if Sacred Beasts won, it would have been like the worst thing in the world. I can hear the angry clackings of keyboards as we speak. However, I'm splitting this into two major parts to explain my point of view, and then I want you guys down in the comments to argue your ever-loving lives out against me because that's what we do in my discussion videos. We actually discuss. Why do I, Davinator1212, think that it's good that Shadal's won and good that Sacred Beasts lost? I'm going to preface this whole video with, um, I cared less that it was Shadal's and more that it was just a good deck that won. And that is because a structure deck is not the right format to give support to the Sacred Beasts because the Sacred Beast archetype is, it's not an archetype, it's barely a theme. Like, seriously. How could I make a deck out of you? There are disparate effects for three different boss monsters meant for three different decks. One a trap-heavy deck, one a spell-heavy deck, and one a specifically heavy fiend monster deck. Shoving the, all three of them into the same deck is next to impossible. Just because you can fusion some of them into one monster doesn't mean they were ever really truly intended to be playing one, in one deck. It's already on pretty dubious terms that we could even create cards to make these things work in one deck and I don't think a structure deck is the place to do this. Normally when we get a structure deck, the structure deck's like for an existing archetype or whatever and just introduces the shiny card on the front plus a few other shiny cards as new support. Then the rest is normally just reprints of other cards in the archetype and then followed up by some choice reprints of tech cards and then another copy of MST. Very rarely is a majority of the structure deck new cards. So it'd be very unlikely that a structure deck centered around sacred beasts would be enough new cards to make the deck work because four cards is not going to fix these things so at best it's going to make them kind of playable eh, and then it'll it'll just flop and we've noticed that the most successful structure decks are actually structure decks that are successful competitively whether it, you want to play competitive or not it's nice to know that when you spend 30 dollars on three copies of a structure deck you could mush them together and make something that will do really really well Soul Burner comes to mind, the Monarch Structure Deck, the Hero Structure Deck. And again, most of these did not introduce a ton of new cards. It was just like a couple and then the rest were cards we already had. I don't think a Structure Deck is the right environment to support the Sacred Beasts. They could probably use 10 cards or so and like that'd be better served for like a deck building set. Like one of those, uh, uh, like the Battle of Legends probably. Actually, Battle of Legends would be perfect because it's got a lot of anime cards and stuff in it. And that's just getting them to work. Think about this. Those three boss monsters, the Sacred Beasts, aren't even that great. They're okay. And if you fuse all of these monsters together, you get a really bad fusion monster. That's just a humongous beater that doesn't do anything. They would need retrains of the fusion monster, probably some sort of way of fusioning them out, maybe cards that like a, a continuous spell that when you play it, it's some, it like plays two other copies of itself from the deck to the field. Like it had to be a, a bunch of just, and that's just to get these things on board. Once you get them on board, you need a reason to want to do that. You, like, you gotta bolster their effects with some support or even retrain the sacred beast. I don't know, it's gonna be a massive undertaking in order to get these to work. So yeah, point one, structure deck. Not the way to do this. Point two, and probably the most important thing, is that Konami actually asked us, the player base, What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want a structure deck for? They never ask us anything. So why would, in, in, in any stretch of the imagination, would you guys want to waste an opportunity like this on something that you guys know would not be competitively viable? It would just be a, a cheesy fun deck. No! There are so many other good archetypes that are just like one or two cards away from being brought back into the competitive scene. Something like Shadal's, where there is a fundamental a strategy 
built into the archetype. It's a cohesive engine with an objective it's trying to accomplish. It just needs a few cards in order to speed it up to modern standards. That is what you can build upon in a structure deck. And if you do that, that structure deck will be competitively viable and then therefore successful. And we want the structure deck to be successful, so Konami does this again. We need them to create something that is good, that will sell well, so that they can see in their money heads that, oh look, we asked the player base, they gave us a good suggestion, and then they proceeded to buy it. We should ask the player base questions more often instead of just pretending like they don't exist because that's what Konami does. They pretend like we do not exist. I was blown away when I learned that we were actually like being asked to question by like by our Japanese overlords. I'll never forgive the Japanese. And like no one was even talking about that. They're all talking about like what the deck they want to win. No, when no one's talking about how monumentous it is that they actually just simply asked us a question. They are under no obligation to do that and they're under no obligation to even listen to their own poll. But they did it. They asked us a question. The last time I can think of that Konami ever gave us any input on what they wanted was it was actually I think Shonen Jump asking us what they want to make for like the Shonen Jump promo. That's like really not the same thing. They don't ask us questions. They don't give us opportunities for input. So when they finally do, we need to give them a constructive answer. Shadal's is a very constructive answer because the player base will buy that up and it'll do well and it'll in behoove them to do this again. Third or fourth starter deck, structure deck, whatever you want to call them, the in, we can start asking for dumb crap to have fun. But the first couple need to be good so they keep doing this. I hate that's how we have to be because I think it'd be really interesting to see what they could do with Sacred Beasts because again, they are so bad and such a non-cohesive theme that it'd be interesting from like a card design standpoint how you would actually fix that. I would like to see that because it would be It'd, it'd be actually quite clever if they could figure out how to do it and it not be either really really bad still or not so overtly broken or outside of the original idea of the cards that they're not even the same thing anymore but yeah those are just my thoughts um like i said i want this whole experiment Konami's doing to be successful for them so that it's also successful for us so i don't think sacred beasts in conclusion were the right ob uh, right deck for this because despite the fact that a ton of people voted for them that doesn't necessarily translate to those people actually going out and buying it because if it, they don't make money it's they're probably not going to print cards no more because dual links is making an ass load of money and as soon as we give them a reason to they'll drop our cardboard and just do that but anyway, guys that was my thoughts and remember guys down in the comments i really do guys want you guys want you to give you guys thoughts on this you know whether or not i make any sense or i'm just talking out my butt and if i give you the opportunity to tell me i'm talking out of my butt whether you agree or not you're just gonna you're just gonna say that right ryan <laughs> Yeah, yeah, see? Remember guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? And I will see you guys next time. And thank you, Ryan, for helping. Wait just a moment. I can see you were about to click the subscribe button. Was I right? Tell me I was right. I was right, right? My Millennium Eye lets me see everything, including these other videos by Davy Boy. Don't be a stranger. You will always be welcome in my Toon World.